Hello fellow tamers. After completing the first dim on the bracelet BE, I have gotten the hang of the new bracelet and have decided to do this comparison video. Um, but firstly, before I begin, for those who don't know, the Vital Hero uh, bracelet is actually essentially the same as the Digivice V Vital bracelet. Everything is the same, uh, the hardware is the same, the software is the same, only the logo and uh, the band designs are different. But that's not the main point. The point is that this comparison video is between the older series and the newer series. And for simplicity, the Vital Hero and the Digivice V and the old Vital Bracelet, which I'll call them the Vital Series or older bracelets. For the newer model, which is known as the Digivice VV or the 25th anniversary set that I have yet to receive, and the Bracelet BE for the matter, which I'll call them the Bracelet BE. So this is how we reference to these models from here on. But I'm bringing it forward this video among the backlog of other videos because like there are many tamers here considering the bracelet BE. I've been seeing a lot of these questions in the comment section of my video as well. So yes, I'm bringing this video forward ahead of some of the logs I'm supposed to do. And just a disclaimer, this is purely for informative purposes. I'm not incentivized to convince you to buy the bracelet BE. I'm not sponsored to make this video and neither am I trying to convince you to burn a hole in your wallet just because I burn a hole in mine. So this is purely for informative purposes and I believe in making informed decisions and the more information you have, the better decisions you'll make. My channel is a Digimon researcher but I focus only on the virtual pet aspect of the Digital Monsters franchise and I have been recording every Digimon that I raised on the old Vital Bracelet and I will continue to do so for the new Bracelet BE. And if you like such content, then you have come to the right place. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe with a Vmon headbutt. And without further ado, let's dive into this comparison video. And I'll quickly speed through the very obvious differences that are already very well known. Okay, the first clear difference is the water resistant IPX4 standard. So the older model of the bracelets, the older series, basically, um, how should I put it? The witch from Wicked. The moment water touches it, it's gone, right? Um, if you wash your hands, if you get caught in the rain, then it's gonna start malfunctioning and you'll just uh, get damaged. So the newer bracelet, Bracelet BE, has a water resistance of up to IPX4. Now what does this mean? This means that if you get caught in the rain or you can wash your hands, um, a little bit of water is not gonna damage it. But it doesn't mean that you can go swim with it or bathe with it. Um, for reference, those watches that allow you to do that like the Apple Watch Series 2 to 7, those have a totally different scale in water resistance. Those have like a water resistance of 50. You can go up to uh, water of depth up to 50 meters. So those are the ones you can swim with, not these. If you go swim with this, then you're gonna have to buy yourself a new bracelet. The second key difference is that the bracelet BE loads new Digimon BE DIM cards with a max roster of up to 23 Digimon. So, the older Digimon DIMMs only have a roster size of 17 and the old bracelets can only load those older DIMM cards which can hold up to 17 Digimon. They will not be able to load the bigger size DIMMs that will be released with a higher number of roster, sadly. So with this move from Bandai, this basically means that all the older bracelets technically are obsolete. They can only play and load the older Digimon DIMMs that have already been released but those that are released going forward with a bigger roster size those will not be compatible with the older bracelets you can only play those with the newer bracelet BE the third key difference is bracelet BE have some kind of franchise multiverse sort of like I say sort of because technically the bracelet BE can load both the old Digimon DIMMs as well as the old Vital Bracelet Memory character cards such as your Ultraman or your Kamen Rider and also other new franchise memory cards as well like My Hero Academy and in the past technically these bracelets can load some of the character memory like Ultraman but when you load such a DIMM these characters are stuck they basically cannot be loaded anywhere they cannot be loaded into the Digimon app because they are not a Digimon. 
neither can they be loaded into the uh, character air uh, for Ultraman or Kamen Rider because the bracelet you have is for Digimon. So these characters that you load within the older bracelets are just stuck in limbo on your bracelet and you just have to delete them after a while. But going forward with the bracelet BE, you can now load them all into the same bracelet and they can be transferred into the all-in-one arena app. So the arena app will have different sections and there's a Digimon section, there's an Ultraman section, there's a Kamen Rider section. So whenever you have an Ultraman dim loaded into your bracelet B, you just need to make sure you transfer that character, for example Ultraman, into the Ultraman section. So like I said, it's sort of a multiverse but not really because it's not like you can see Digimon fighting Ultraman or Ultraman fighting Kamen Rider. Um, they still go into their respective contained section in the app. I think it's kind of a missed opportunity here. Bandai, this is your opportunity to own all your different franchises and combine all of them. So it would have been really interesting to see such a feature. But who knows, maybe it'll be in the future. The fourth key difference is that there are no more trophies. So in the past, the older bracelets, you always have trophies to determine the evolution. Going forward, there are no more trophies. The, they are called PP now. Uh, PP stands for face points. It's a very weird acronym. But uh, face points basically is the new thing that determines the evolution requirements. So if you see under your stats, you will see this little thing that says PP with an arrow up. You see the squat symbol that means that doing squats will give you face points. The fifth key difference is that the other exercises now will give you stats bonuses. So in the past, there are four exercises. There's dash, there's punches, there's crunches, and there's squats. So these four exercises usually give you trophies that is useful for your evolution. But squats are the only ones that's giving you face points now um, for evolution phase. Right? The other exercises will instead give you different kinds of stats. So if you do the exercise well, you will get plus 5 only if it's good. You will get plus 10 if it's great and you get nothing if it's 0. Which exercise will give you the respective stats? You can check it under the menu. So if you see BP, there's a dash symbol. HP, there's a cruncher symbol. And AP, there's a puncher symbol. And HP clearly stands for hit points, AP attack points, and BP is the new term for DP. In the past, we called it Digimon Power. Uh, now it's called BP, Battle Points. And note, on the unboxing video, I mentioned that BP is used for defense, but that's only when you're using the Digimon to battle on the app. Because the app battle now are basically turn-based battles, and the arena usage of the BP is different from how BP is used on the bracelet. Because on the bracelet, it is not turn-based. On the bracelet, it is mostly RNG-based. If you attack, you might hit the opponent, and if you don't hit the opponent, you basically get hit by the opponent's responding attack. So on the bracelet, BP, battle points, instead determines the chance of you hitting the opponent or you getting hit. So the higher the BP, the higher the chance of you hitting the opponent. And it's very clearly stated in the instruction manual that's the function of battle points, right? But on the arena, it's turn-based, so there's no like chance of hitting, you know, you basically have an attack phase and you have a defense phase. So that's why they convert the battle points into a defense stats. So that makes sense. So the next key difference is basically on one of the promises that Bandai made to the Digimon uh, fans is that they try to make the new generation of Digimon on the Bracelet BE somewhat unique, such that Imperial Dramon Paladin mode that is raised by one tamer will be different from the Imperial Dramon Paladin mode that is raised by another tamer. So you try to create this kind of like unique Digimon uh, concept. And the first way that they have done it, which is a six key difference to customize your Digimon is app abilities. So these abilities, your Digimon will actually have an app ability and it's indicated in the status screen as well as when you load your Digimon into the app. Uh, as you can see in my earlier logs, there are different rarities to these abilities. There's a normal rarity, there's a rare, there's a super rare, 
And if we have seen the Mon Mon Mammals that have been announced before, it looks like there could be SSR as well as ultra rare abilities as well, but so far we have not encountered them. If so, they probably are very rare to actually encounter them this early on. I don't know if they will release items in the future that can change your ability. I hope so. I was initially disappointed when I raised my first Vmon and it had a normal ability, but honestly, there's no need to worry because every time your Digimon evolves, the ability changes. So from Vmon to X Vmon, uh, he had a normal ability, but when he was XVmon, he had a rare ability. And then when he evolved into Pale Dramon, uh, he had an SR ability. And he evolved into Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode, it dropped back to normal. So it's really randomly generated. And actually, each app ability is very different. Um, there are various types. Some are just a clear stats boost. Some have an activation condition depending on the enemy that you're fighting. And some have an activation condition depending on your ally setup in your duo battle. So, one thing to note is that the rarity is just an indicator of the magnitude of the stats raised. It is not an indicator for the usefulness of the ability. So you might have an SR ability, but maybe it's just to increase HP, which you might not find that useful as compared to an attack power raise, right? And maybe the attack power raise is a normal rarity, but a 5% could mean more to you than a 10% increase in HP. So that's just something to think about. Don't judge the ability too quickly just because you see that its rarity is low. And another thing, app abilities apparently are set for each BEM. So apparently there is a fixed amount of set abilities in the BEM that can be generated. This was mentioned in the Mon Mon memo, but I think we need more data miners to prove this. And if we understand the concept correctly, it could also mean that the BEMs can get power crap by newer BEMs. You know, the power creep can set in where newer memory just have better app abilities as well, right? That in the older BEM cards do not have. And as the name suggests, this is just an app ability. So it only affects battles that are done on the arena app. It doesn't affect or change anything for the battles done on your bracelet. The second way that Bandai introduced to customize your Digimon is the concept of bonus stats. But take note, the bonus stats are max at 999. So if you see here, under your status, you will be able to see the basic stats for my Battle Gamamon, right? There's the BP, there's the HP, and you see these yellow numbers at the side, that's plus 600, plus 606, plus 600. These are the bonus stats that you get for doing the extra exercises I mentioned earlier. So if you do dash, um, if you do it great, you get a plus 10. So Bandai basically believed and set this up you know, this is a way for people to customize their Digimon. In theory, it is right. So, Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode, there's 999 stats for all three HP, BP, and AP, would actually be stronger than an Imperial Dramon Paladin Mode that has zero stats, uh, zero boosted stats, right? And it only has its base stats. So, that in theory works. But I think their assumption is that people won't do that many exercises till they reach the max of 999. So they probably underestimated the, the determination of the players. And if you think about it, with plus 5 and plus 10 being the results, for each exercise, you basically need to do uh, 100 to 200 times to max one step. And to max all stats means you just need to do all these exercises 300 to 600 times. And you know, they, they, I don't know if they realize that hardcore gamers, it's an, a re really easy thing to do. <laughs> so uh, if you check out on Twitter posts, people that are posting the profiles of their Digimon, almost all of them have max stats. So in the end, when everything is max, the base stats for the Digimon still matter because at the end of the day, if the Mega Digimon still has higher base stats than the other, and all of them are, the bonus stats are all 999, then the inherent stats would still triumph. But it makes sense, uh, and it definitely moves the casual players like myself out of the comparison table. You know, if if you're if you're just playing casually, then you probably won't try to max your stats for everything. So it still creates some kind of 
uniqueness to the Digimon that you raise. Yeah, so that's the second way that you can customize your Digimon. The eighth key difference is that now there is a time limit of 100 hours on your Digimon from the moment it hatches. Technically, this time limit of 100 hours is to limit the fact that you can't raise your stats indefinitely. So remember the concept of the 999 stats that I mentioned earlier? If there is no time limit, basically you can just take your time to just max your Digimon stats over a month or something and then everybody will have the same level of Digimon. So by setting a time limit, it's supposed to lock the, the period, that window for you to raise your Digimon stats. It, it creates a whole narrative of making your Digimon unique through specific stats boosts. But this time limit also becomes a limit for you to increase your PP. Remember PP? Your face points. And your face points are essential for evolution. So what this means is that if you have exceeded 100 hours and the time limit is up, you will no longer be able to increase your face points of your Digimon. And if you can't increase your face points, that Digimon is just stuck in the evolution stage forever. So in the past, how does this differ from your older bracelet? In the past, if you fail to meet evolution requirements, the evolution timer will just reset. If it's supposed to evolve 24 hours later, um, 24 hours is, is up, then you have not reached any evolution requirement, that 24 hours will just reset. And you just get to try again, and you just keep increasing your, your trophy counts, and your battle counts, and your victory rate, until, and all your vitals, until you manage to meet an evolution requirement, and your Digimon will just evolve. But with this stat timer, you can't drag your feet anymore. If you fail to meet the evolution requirement, yes, the evolution timer resets. And it, it looks fine when your evolution timer resets, but your time limit for the stats boost and the PP increase is still dropping and he has dropped and you lost 24 hours and you're, 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 you need to wait another 24 hours to evolve again. So you basically can't drag your feet too much. You, you just have to make sure that every evolution attempt counts. So that's a key difference between the older bracelet and the newer bracelet. The ninth key difference is that vital values are also a currency for battling on the app now. So in the past, your vital values, aside from fulfilling uh, evolution requirements, uh, vital values also affect the battles on the app. So the higher the value, you will have a higher HP bonus and thereby it looks like you are receiving less damage from the enemy shots. And now it's actually the same, but it has additional function of being a currency to battle on the app. So when you load it into the app and you want to partake in a free battle, it will give you a warning only on the first time that you're trying a battle. They will tell you that it costs you 300 uh, vital values to partake in a battle. After that, you will not see that warning sign anymore. And I think I did a demonstration when I was doing the transferring of the app from the old app to the new app as well. And there's evidence that you know, it just deducts 300 vital values. And the weird thing is that if, when you win the battle, you don't gain in vital values on the app. So I don't know if it's a deliberate design or is it a glitch they have yet to fix or discovered. But a lot of people have been complaining about that and I hope they change something about it. Because it's weird that, you know, the app battle takes a lot more effort than the random battles done on the bracelet, yet you don't get rewarded with the vital values. And you actually spend vital values to partake in a battle. Um, so it's very, very strange. Uh, older players are probably not used to this. Anyway, the app battles don't count towards evolution requirements. So anyway, I've just been doing battles on a bracelet, right? Um, another thing is that in the each evolution stage, in the past, um, different evolution stage has a cap on the vital values you can gain. So if it's a rookie, you have a cap of 2,500. If it's a champion, it's capped at 5,000. And then if it's uh, ultimate, I remember it's 7,005 and then mega, it's 9999. Um, from the bracelet B onwards, all evolution stages have a limit of 9,999. 9, so that is one of the key differences that is noticed in the bracelet B. I think it's to cater for the fact that you need to use vital values to partake in battles. Because of that, I think evolution requirements for vital values are a lot less as well. In the past vital series, 
um, the older Vital series to evolve to some megas, you actually need 7,000 or even 7,500 Vital values. But now to evolve to some of the mega Digimon in the roster, 4,000 Vital values would be the highest requirement. So I think that's something that they have calibrated due to the, the newer design. But I don't know, I still like the fact that if you battle on the app, you get to gain vital values. I think that's really important. Um, so now that you know you can't gain vital values by battling on the app, and you need to cost vital values by battling on the app, my recommendation is to just use the NFC to trigger battles for free. And they actually give you vital values when you win on the bracelet. And, and those battles actually count towards your evolution requirements. The 10th key difference is that in the bracelet BE, the power off button is on a soft menu. So basically you have to go to here to switch off your bracelet power and then you choose shut down to switch it off. I'm not going to shut it down because I need it on. But yes, unlike the older bracelets, the power off is a switch on the back of the bracelet. You can see here, there's a switch and just switch it off. So. This was a real bummer for me when I started using the Bracelet BE because this means that one of the old tricks and I've shared this in an earlier guide before when you're about to lose a battle and you just want to avoid losing and recording a loss because victory rates are so important you can just switch off the device when you see that you're about to lose right? And you can just avoid recording that loss So on the Bracelet, there is no way to just switch it off when you're battling and you're about to lose I'm just kidding so actually there is a cheat here, there is a cheat here uh, Yes, the power off is in the menu and when you're battling you can't access the menu But there is a way to switch off the device without the switch So what you do here is that you just hold the confirm button down for like 10 seconds And after 10 seconds, the device will switch off Even when it's in the midst of the battle, I just tried it earlier when you're about to lose, you can just hold the button for 10 seconds and it will just turn off. It will make a sound first, you hear a few beeps and the device will just switch off. But take note, the difference here is that it takes 10 seconds in order for the device to switch off. This means that you must cater enough time in the battle to ensure that 10 seconds pass successfully for you to switch it off. So if you wait too long, for example, you would think that you can wait till you're left with the last teeny tiny bit of HP left. You know that once the opponent hits, you're gonna lose. And you try to press the power button then, it will actually be too late because 10 seconds is really long. Now if you consider each round of this battle to be like your Digimon firing a shot and then the enemy firing a shot as one round, 10 seconds is like 1.5 rounds of that. So if you wait till your Digimon is like with one ounce of HP left and then you try to press the power button then, it could be too late. But honestly, this is only if you're desperate because you, your Digimon has a very low victory rate and you really need some wins and you can't record another loss, then probably that's your desperate attempt to, to try and salvage your victory rate. I, I noticed there are a few users on my uh, channel as well that's commenting about this victory rate problem that it can't seem to get a uh, higher victory rate then yeah you can probably use this cheat code right um, if you see that your battle is not going well your Digimon has less than half the HP left and the enemy has like uh, the full HP still then you probably just want to press the power button and switch it off since that fight is probably not gonna end well other than that, that is actually not the official method, so please use it sparingly. I'm not sure what kind of damage it might do to the device, um, though honestly it's unlikely. It sounds more like a software kind of thing. So, the proper way though, to ensure a high win rate, since now it's a little more tricky to avoid a loss, is to consistently fight a Digimon of lower evolution status. So, because they have lower evolution status, they are more likely to have lower stats and that's why the flee option is so important. So when you trigger a battle, usually when you press, you will see the profile, basically the artwork of the enemy you're fighting. You need to know the artwork, you need to recognize the artwork and know, oh crap, that is like an ultimate Digimon and I only have a champion Digimon, then forget it, press the flee button and escape. There's no way you're going to win the fight. In fact, if you're a champion, you might want to go 
against a rookie Digimon just to increase your rate of success. Now having said that, are these battles really a lot easier? And we segue into the 11th key difference in this video. The 11th key difference of this video is that the fights now on the Bracelet BE seem to be considerably harder. Um, even when you fight lower evolution Digimons, you might still lose. So using the Imperial Dramon Dim as an example, um, when my ex Vmon was fighting Vmon and Wormmon, there were times where I would still lose to them. So in the past, the older bracelets, um, it's almost a sure win. If you are using a champion to fight a rookie, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to win for ultimate to champion as well as mega to ultimate. You know, it's very easy to win. But when I was raising, for example, even on the Imperial Dramon Dragon mode, there were times I would encounter Dino Beamon and Pale Dramon and I would still lose. I think they did some balancing here so that the power difference is not that huge. Basically, the lower level Digimons are not entirely useless and they can still stand a chance to win. But that also means uh, that they calibrated some stats. So in the past, a mega level fighting an ultimate level, like Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode fighting Pale Dramon, would have only gained uh, 200 vital values for victory. But because the battles are harder now, winning an ultimate level Digimon when you're using a mega, uh, you actually gain 400 vital values. Not too shabby, not too far from winning a mega Digimon, because mega versus mega, if you win, you get 500. Whereas mega versus ultimate, you get 400. So I think it's a very clear indicator that the battles are getting more difficult. Lower evolution Digimon are getting better stats now and the power level difference is not that huge. Still, to increase your chance of better uh, victory rates to evolve into the Digimon that you want, yeah, you'll probably want to choose some of these Digimon that are of lower evolution status. And another way is your attribute. So this is very basic. If you don't know this, um, you ought to know this by now. Digimon basically has this concept of vaccine virus data. Vaccine will always triumph virus, virus will triumph data, and data triumphs vaccine. And in this case, uh, how the bracelet battles will work is that if you have an advantageous attribute like vaccine versus a virus Digimon, then your vaccine Digimon is more likely to hit the virus Digimon than uh, miss the virus Digimon. So it probably works together with BP that we mentioned earlier. BP also influences how often you are able to hit the enemy. Attribute here plays a part on that as well. They literally have the same description when you read the manual. Pick your battles. So pick your battles against the Digimon that you want to win and you know that you can win so that you can rack up your win rate. Otherwise, you know, use tip number 10 and avoid the loss. Especially if you accidentally click the wrong button and you end up fighting a mega level or an ultimate when you're using a champion and you know you're gonna lose for sure, then it's time to press that power button for 10 seconds. That's the cheat code. The 12th key difference here is that support Digimon is a new feature. So we, we were talking earlier about how the fights are considerably harder. I think this support function is introduced and therefore they had to make the fights a little harder to cater room for the support function to be actually useful. Because if the fights are really easy, then that support function is quite bad. So support Digimon and backup Digimon are some of the key changes here uh, on the new bracelet BE as well. So. Most of you probably know, in the past we have uh, Digimon on the active uh, screen as well as one backup Digimon. On the Bracelet BE, you basically have one active and three on backup. So you basically have four Digimon at one time in the Bracelet BE. But what's more exciting than that is in the backup slot, you actually have a Digimon that you can select as your support function Digimon. This support function is an indicator for the Digimon that will be chosen to provide support fire during a battle. So there are times when your battle is going really badly and your Digimon is about to lose, suddenly that support Digimon can appear and the animation of it will flash and turn the tide of the battle. So suddenly he will just fire his attack as well and uh, usually when that animation comes up, it's a sure win, like it's a definite win. So I think 
the fights are probably harder because they had to cater for this function. If the fights are too easy, then there's there's no need to have this function. It's a little OP, right? So there were times where I thought that the battle is going down the drain, and suddenly my Imperial Drama Paladin will, will appear on backup, providing support fire, and it will just turn the battle around. This is how you actually select your support character. So okay, um, in your character, you will see that. Uh, the first character is just, you know, it's a dummy character, it's just an avatar, it's just you, there's nothing there, it's not a Digimon. And the second, uh, there will be 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5. So basically, four Digimons or four things that you can put on the backup. And you can see Imperial Drum Paladin mode now has a little support label there. So the support label is how you actually know that this Digimon is providing the support. So if you want to change, you just need to press this button. As you can see, I was on Leafmon and I just press this button. And now Leafmon is providing the support, but his support is probably useless. So let me switch it back, right? Before I get into I forget and then I get into a battle with it. So Imperial Dramon Paladin mode is now providing the support by just pressing the first button when I'm looking at him. Please make sure to press it when you are on this character selection screen and you see his name scrolling across. Not when you are here, because this will just confuse the hell out of you. Because basically this is when you are just trying to switch the Digimon out and you'll be like wondering, hey, how do I do this support thing here again? Like why is it Battle Gammon? So just make sure that you're on the character selection screen and you press the first button and hold and that you'll see the support label appearing. That means that the support Digimon has been assigned or reassigned. One thing to note, support characters cannot be across franchise. So for example, my Imperial Drama Paladin mode cannot support Ultraman Tiga because that's a different franchise altogether. And another thing to note, even in the Digimon universe, the older Vital series Deems are considered a different franchise from the BE series of Deems. For example, uh, my Imperial Dramon Paladin mode that is raised on the Bracelet BE with the Imperial Dramon Dim that came from the pre-order will be able to support Gammon Dim and the 25th Anniversary Dim uh, because those are the BE generation uh, Dim cards. But if I were to load the Frontier Dim and I am trying to raise Suzano Mon for example, Imperial Dramon Paladin mode will not be able to provide support fire for Suzano Mon because those belong in the Vital series old series of dim cards and those are considered a different franchise so honestly i i don't know what's the thinking behind this i feel this is another missed opportunity i thought it would be really funny that you're fighting um a boss battle and then suddenly you know an ultraman appears to help to provide support fire or you know um my hero academia or i think demon slayer imagine a demon slayer character coming out to provide some support fire that would have been really interesting right really multiverse level kind of uh, fun but they decided not to allow that maybe it's a technical constraint i don't know if the new kind of generation of bracelet b will allow for that but i really think it would make it more fun if it was done that way so i don't know what you think uh, feel free to leave your comments in the section below about this this specific feature but i still like the support feature don't get me wrong it's, it's still fun to see one of your favorite Digimon appearing. I, I can imagine if I raised an Alphos V-Dramon, I'm, I'm pretty sure I will load it in. And I, it would be nice to just see Alphos V-Dramon helping to provide support fire time to time. So I just gotta wait for Alphos v to appear on a BE Generation Dim card because the old Ancient Warriors, like I mentioned, won't be able to provide support fire for the newer generation of the BEMs. Okay, the 13th key difference here is that the bracelet B now shows the stats of your next evolution needed and the evolution options as well. So if you go to your status, you can see the Battle Gamma Mon, aside from his stats, if you keep pressing on, these are his current stats for his battles, face points, victory rate, etc. You can see that they will show, okay, to evolve into I think it's Kenoe's Mon. Kenoe's Mon. You need 15 battles, 12 face points, 60% victory rate, and 3000 vital values. And you can also see the other evolution option as well. That, oh, to evolve into this, I need 50% win rate, 10 PP, 
10 battles, 2,500 and so on. So you can just scroll through these options and it actually tells you uh, exactly what you need to raise and the different options as well. So this is really convenient. In the past, you already are able to check this on the app, but in the app, it was always confusing because the app actually contained the cumulative view of all the Digimon's battles and wins and the cumulative view of all the Digimon's trophies or now known as face points. But then in the evolution guide in the codex, it's actually the battles required within the evolution phase, not cumulative. So people got confused, right? They saw their battles and they're like, oh, I, I need 10 battles and I have 10 battles, but they didn't realize that the 10 battles is cumulative and it included the, the, the 5 battles that the Digimon did when he was in rookie form, not in champion form. So he failed his evolution uh, requirements. But now on the Bracelet BE is clear as day. Just go to your status. Your status will always show the, the current phase uh, stats right? for battles and PP. It resets to zero every time it evolves. And then here shows the requirements that you need. It's not only convenient because you don't have to keep ripping out your mobile phone, you can just check it on your wrist when you want to. And it, it helps to clear the whole confusion thing about cumulative versus like current phase. You just refer to the bracelet and you'll get it right. So that's one of the useful differences in the bracelet BE. The 14th key difference is that now it will also show if the evolution route is locked. So in Battle Gammamon's case, um, this is not the best example. There are no locked routes for Battle Gammamon. But you know, in the earlier video that I showed uh, when I was raising Pale Dramon, I didn't have uh, Imperial Dramon Paladin mode unlocked. So when I was looking at Imperial Dramon Paladin mode stats, it actually showed a lock symbol. You can just refer to that video and you will know what I mean. Um, it was locked and basically it's reminding me that I haven't unlocked Imperial Drama Paladin mode from the adventure missions. So I shouldn't be just raising the stats and expecting something to happen because nothing will happen and I will just fail the evolution. And now, if I'm lucky, I might evolve into dragon mode, but probably the stats battle diff requirements are different. If I recall correctly, Imperial Drama Paladin mode needed 15 PP, but Dragon Mode only needed 20, uh, actually needed 20, that's more. So if I met only 15 phase points, I will not evolve into Imperial Drama Paladin because the route was still locked. And I would not evolve into Dragon Mode as well because I did not have enough phase points to evolve into Dragon Mode. So this was one critical thing that a lot of people uh, complained about or had some issues with because they didn't know and they didn't check you know, online guides. Uh, for this, maybe because they didn't know that there were online guides available to check evolution requirements. Um, and the Digidex didn't tell if this evolution needed some kind of stage unlock as well. So they just thought that, hey, I fulfilled the requirements, I should be able to evolve. And they are wondering, how come I didn't get the Digimon that I wanted and I got something else or it just didn't evolve. But in reality, is that they were locked behind that hidden stage. In the past, the Vital series, it was stage 15. So the stage 15 secret evolution, um, there's no clear indication that you actually need to defeat the boss in order to unlock, unlock the evolution. But over here now, going forward, if there's an evolution that you want and you're checking your evolution requirements, and instead of seeing the picture that you see here, right, you see a lock symbol, then you know for sure that that Digimon evolution is still locked behind some evolution stage. Now here's my feedback. I think in that lock profile, <coughs> it would have been a lot use, more useful if they've indicated which stage you need to clear in order to unlock that evolution. I think that would have been a much better user interface. People, people will know exactly which stage you need to clear rather than just left to guess. <coughs> but maybe they just want to leave a little more to the mystery of things but i still like the fact that they now actually provide a clarity that the evolution route is locked so that you don't get any nasty surprises so that's a great move on that on that the 15 key difference here is you can use your favorite digimon to fight in another dim's adventure mode so in the past when you are trying to find the adventure mission on the specific dim card, you can only use those Digimons that are raised in a specific dim 
uh, to, f to clear the adventure mode. So for example, if you are trying to clear Ancient Warriors, then you need to use a Digimon raised in Ancient Warrior, a uh, Dim card like you know, Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode or Alpha Force V Dramon to just clear the adventure mode there. But in the new Bracelet VE, let me show it to you then. You can basically use another Digimon to clear another Dim's adventure mode. So for example, I have here my Imperial Dramon Paladin. Is in the past, it would, it would just mean that Paladin mode here can only clear the Imperial Dramon Dim adventure mode, right? But no, in the new generation, you can select the type of adventure mission you are going to embark on. So even though Imperial Dramon Paladin mode is from the Imperial Dramon Dim, he's able to clear the Gammamon adventure mission. So here we go. You can see here, Imperial Dramon Paladin mode is helping to clear the adventure mode for Gammamon Dim. So this is really interesting. I think this is a feature that a lot of people asked for and they delivered. So this is really cool. But honestly, for me, my preference is still to raise the Digimon from the Dim. Especially since your favorite Digimon is usually of a specific attribute. Like for example, Imperial Drawn Paladin mode is Vaccine. So if I always use Vaccine type, um, eventually I'll encounter problems when I'm faced with a Data type boss or Mega level. Like Kuzuhamon is on the Gammamon Dim. So if I encounter Kuzuhamon with my Imperial Drawn Paladin, I'll probably struggle. So it's kind of better to use some variety because of the attributes. Plus, it just makes it more fun to, to try out a different Digimon um, within the Dim card. But there's nothing stopping you from using your favorite Digimon now. So you can just use one favorite Digimon or two favorite Digimon just power your way through a new Dim card. So there's a new way to play it and makes it more fun. Oh, this is a mouthful. I, I didn't expect it to be so long. Now, the 16 key difference is that the adventure mode now doesn't show if you have cleared the final stage. So this is a bad thing. I don't know why they did this. So I mentioned this in the earlier video as well. If you look at the adventure mode here. So you can see it just says stage 12. And then of course, if you can reach stage 12, it must mean that you have already cleared, you know. Uh, stage 11 but at stage 12 there's no indicator anywhere to say that I've defeated this stage it looks it could mean that I have cleared stage 12 or it could also mean that I've cleared stage 11 and I have I'm still waiting to clear stage 12 this is how the screen looks like if you have not cleared if you have not cleared of course it will be red but when you're on the actual stage that you need to partake in for example stage 12 it will just show a white font so it just doesn't tell me much compared to the past. So in the past, oh yes, this is activated. Um, my daughter saw me playing this and she asked if uh, she could play with one of these bracelets. So <laughs> I activated one of them, uh, the Digivice V, and she's just been wearing it. And she's been raising some uh, Digimon on Infinite Type just for fun. So it's quite funny. Um, but yeah, let me let me see uh, if there's a way for me to... Yes, okay, so there's uh, Lydramon. So, if the stage is not cleared in the past, they will actually show a different kind of uh, font. And if it's clear, it will show a yellow font. That to me was a very clear way to tell the user that it has not been cleared. See, the goal stage 15. Um, so actually I have not transferred to the old app. It would have shown that stage 15 is already cleared because I've cleared it before. So yeah, it, it's it's a very useful feature that they had in the past. I don't know why they undid it, or maybe it's just a, a design thing that they failed to incorporate. But you know, I hope to see some changes in the future. The good thing is that apparently there can be firmware updates inserted through here that they can release in the future. So I don't know if they'll actually do that. Um, I hope so. But yes, this is so painful. So I just have to rely on pure memory and hope that I remember correctly that I've actually cleared stage 12, right? And it doesn't give me the assurance that I've actually cleared that stage, right? Because there's no indicator that it has already been cleared. So it's very, very strange. But still, this is not the worst part of 
this new bracelet regarding adventure mode, all right? 17th key difference here. Adventure mode progress is not transferred to the app and consequently not transferable to another bracelet BB. So I think I mentioned this in just the earlier video on my unboxing video. I really dislike this, this feature that it has been removed. I don't know if it's intentional, I hope not. Now, basically what happened was I ran Digivice BB for a couple of days and the red band just you know, annoyed me. So I, I couldn't bear wearing this very loud design. And so I got myself one of these. Right? Uh, so it's a lot more discreet and you know, doesn't attract too much attention. But after running this for a while with my Imperial Drum on, uh, dim, uh, dim on it, basically I cleared stage 12 and it was cleared on the red bracelet. And, and I had a pale drum on that was also raised on the way and it also showed that the evolution route is unlocked because I've already cleared stage 12, I can evolve to Imperial Drum on Paladin. But when I transferred that pill drum onto the VBE, the BE, the black one, the new bracelet had no record of my stage 12 clearance. I was back to stage 1 again and everything was in red. So it was a little scary, but basically when I transferred it back to the red to just check, the stage clearance was still there and the evolution route unlock was also clearly indicated that I can evolve to Imperial Drum on Paladin. But when I transferred it back into the bracelet black again, you know, it's still locked and it's back to stage 1. So the, the clear problem is that the app doesn't take in that data that you have cleared your adventure stage and the evolution routes have been unlocked. Now, this was a feature that was present in the older series of your Vital uh, Bracelet and your Vital Hero and your you know, Digivice V. When you transferred it to your VB Lab app, there is a Tamer profile. And in fact, in my older guides that you have seen before or you have not seen it, you can also check it out if you are just curious. So it's not really relevant now. In the Tamer profile, there were uh, a list of dims that you can connect and they will indicate which that you have connected to. And in the Tamer profile, there is an icon next to these Tamer dim cards. So if it's Ancient Warrior, you will see an icon for Ancient Warrior. And if you have defeated Stage 15, that icon will actually light up to that specific dim card's color scheme. So if Ancient Warrior was like uh, turquoise or something or light, like light blue right so that gives you a very clear indicator that the app recognizes you have defeated stage 15 right and unlocked that secret evolution and when you transfer any digimon from the bracelet to the app and the app to the bracelet it will always carry that clearance data over even if you are using different bracelets so while i was using the neon bracelet for a while and I finally received this any digimon that i transferred uh, from the bracelet to the app and from the app to the new device B carry all that clearance data. So even this like uh, Ray Dramon that I have now, Light Dramon, uh, if I transfer it to my lab app and transfer it back, it will actually show that the stage 15 is clear, right? So that's a very useful feature that I don't know why they remove it in the bracelet BE generation. So Honestly, this really annoys me and I will nag about this quite a bit in my upcoming vlogs as well. So brace yourselves. But yeah, I, I really dislike Bandai for making this decision to remove that feature. I hope they make improvements to the app and, uh, and that they are able to incorporate this feature that was already existent. Like why remove a perfectly working feature, Bandai? So disappointing. Okay, the 18th key difference is an interesting one. Um, you're able to recruit new Digimon from Adventure Mission. So, in the past, every Digimon that is raised in your bracelet just needs to be hatched from inserting a DIN into the bracelet and then an egg will hatch. So, there are some DIMs where you have different baby Digimon. So, for example, the Imperial Dramon DIM had a Chibomon egg. But there was a Leafmon as well, uh, which is a different baby Digimon. And you don't get to hatch Leafmon from the egg. So instead, for Leafmon, what you need to do is to go to the adventure mission to fight the adventure mission to recruit Leafmon. So how do you know which stage to fight to recruit a new Digimon? It is actually indicated by a star within the adventure mission list. So you can see here stage 2, there's a star here. 
This star indicates that there will be a new partner received when you fight this stage. And case in point, I was using Imperial Drummond Paladin mode to, to clear the adventure mission on the black bracelet where they reset my progress. And because I have to go through that again, I had to clear stage 2 and I got another leaf mon in my backup. That's why I got some random leaf mon in my backup. But that's how you get it. You can get infinite number of leaf mons. You can just keep fighting it and you will, you will just keep receiving the, the partner every time you clear it. So I, I can't recall if Gamma Mon Dim also has a star. I don't think so. So slightly different would be the Imperial Dramon Dim where you get their recruitment aspect, right? So if you see that star, that is where you recruit Leafmon because you cannot catch Leafmon from the Imperial Dramon team. So there's a new key difference in the Bracelet BE, recruiting of new Digimon from the adventure mission. The 19th key difference is that evolution for rookie to champion has been shortened to 12 hours. So in the past, for rookie to champion, also known as child to adult. Honestly, I prefer the Japanese naming of the stages. Um, they make so much sense to me. Uh, baby, baby one, baby two, child, adult, perfect, ultimate, and then super ultimate. But you know, the dark is where most of you are familiar with. So I'm gonna use those terminology. So there's in training one, in training two, rookie, champion, ultimate and then Mega, right, and then Super Mega. Great. So back to this, Rookie to Champion has been shortened to 12 hours. In the past, on the older dims, it was 16 hours. So actually, uh, the evolution requirement seems to be determined by the dim, not the bracelet. So when you look at your older dims, even the codex indicates 16 hours needed. Right, I think in the codex now, in the arena app, it says 960 minutes, which is basically 16 hours. But in the newer bracelet BE dims, they are all 12 hours, 720 minutes. And for some reason, the manual still is not updated. So if you look at the manual that is available for bracelet BE online, if you scan the QR code here, or on the box, I think, uh, there's some part where you can scan to get the the more detailed kind of uh, manual, or it's also inside the manual, uh, you will see that it says the evolution time is 16 hours still, but it actually is 12. So don't get misled thinking that it's 16 when you only have 12 hours to evolve from rookie to champion. But it's good because it's a lot shorter. I like that it's a lot shorter because I like to see this one evolving. But yeah, that's an interesting key difference uh, in the Bracelet BD generation. The 20th key difference here is one that I feel a little sad about that is that Jogress Evolution no longer works. Okay, so let me be precise here. When I say Jogress Evolution no longer works, I'm referring to the generic type of Jogress Evolution by mixing Digimon attribute types. Jogress still happens on the Bracelet BE generation, but only for very specific pairing of Digimon. So I'm not going to say the spoiler for those who don't know Gamma Mon Dim, there is a Jogress pairing that is very specific. But for an example, even though this Dim is not released yet, in the future, if we do have one Agumon Dim that has War Grey and a Gabumon Dim that has Metal Garuru, then it's very likely that War Grey and Metal Garuru will form a specific Jogress pair. So only the specific Jogger's evolution will work in the bracelet BE. Uh, Gamma Mon Dim has one, so only those two will evolve. The one that I said is no longer available is the Jogger's evolution done by mixing Digimon attribute. So in the past, if you have a champion Digimon or an ultimate stage Digimon that can evolve to the next stage, usually it's evolving by stats, but you can use a shortcut. So in the older series, the Vital series, the shortcut is that you can use that Digimon and pair it with a specific alternative attribute type. So sometimes like if I have Raydramon and it's a free type, I can pair it with a Vaccine Digimon in the backup slot. And it could evolve into, it could do a Jogger's evolution to another Digimon. And this is very easy kind of evolution because when this kind of Jogger's evolution happens, it doesn't require any trophies, any battles, and it will just evolve once the timer is up. And a lot of the Digimon have various options. So 
uh, I can't remember off the top of my head but you can check the evolution guide on Humanomon's site he's done it very detailed and carefully and accurately so it's a lot easier you don't have to do all the battles and the trophies if you are okay to use that Jogger's evolution and the better thing about the back the Jogger's evolution is that the backup Digimon remains as it is in the same form and it can be transferred back to the app so it's not consumed and it doesn't disappear <laughs> so you can actually have these joggers helpers always created in the backup and it just helped to speed up their evolution along the way so in fact i actually had a whole video back in the day of the raul vital series called which digimon should i store and there's a whole section saying that you should choose your joggers helper digimon which are of vaccine virus data and free so you can easily evolve into any Digimon that you want by using these Jogger's helpers in the backup slot. So sadly, maybe they realize that people are exploiting this feature too much and they are not really raising Digimon using the fitness features that they really wanted. They just abolished that feature entirely. So this Jogger's evolution through mixing of Digimon attribute is no longer available on the new bracelet. So that's one thing that I'm a little sad about. But yes, um, this is it. This is what you get for trying to game the system. Right? So, well played, Bandai. And yes, it will incentivize us to use the exercises more. And yeah, you are making people do like 100 to 200 uh, punches now, or 100 to 200 dashes within a 100 hour time limit. So, kudos to you. And the 21st, on the last key difference of this video, of the bracelet BE is that the versus din no longer works. So in the past, you can use a versus din, load your current Digimon data into it, and then connect it to your friend's bracelet for a battle. So you just take it out, you put a versus din inside, and like the Ray Dramon that I had, or like Dramon, depending on your sub or dub, um, just insert it. Apparently, uh, it will load that battle data into the versus dim, and you just take that versus dim and connect it to your friend's bracelet, and tada, you can battle because the, the bracelets don't battle this way, you know, not like your old uh, brick devices. Yeah, so now the bracelet BE no longer supports the versus dim, and I think for good reason. Maybe you just want to cut the functionality to make room for the other features that they have introduced earlier in this list, in this video, and it, it, it kind of makes sense to remove that feature because there are better ways to fulfill the need for battling your friend by using the app. So the app now, aside from the fact that you need to use vital values to battle, but it's actually quite cool that you can select free battle and you can create a room. So by creating a room, you and your friend can battle in that specific room remotely. So which is honestly a better substitute than using that flimsy dim versus dim. Apparently there were people who inserted the versus dim and then they were there were glitches where the Digimon was lost in that process. So using it all in the app avoids all those problems. Basically, um, it breaks down the requirement also for your friend to be physically near you uh, to connect a dim. So imagine you have to meet up with a friend, you have to connect the dim, and then you have to meet your friend and pass that dim over to your friend to connect and fight a battle. I mean, if you have tried this feature, you'll probably find it really strange as well <laughs> that you're, 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 you're constrained by this uh, uh, physical need to be near your friend in order to battle. But now that you are using the app, you can create a room remotely. Your friend can be halfway across the world on the opposite side of the hemisphere and you can still battle remotely. So it's great for people who make friends online for the Digimon community that are global, right? To battle each other without the physical constraints of needing to be next to each other. So I think it's a right move. Um, just that the app is still a little glitchy on the battle. So some people are hesitant to use the app to battle. But once the app has stabilized, I think it's a great feature. And of course, please let us gain vital values from battling. It doesn't make any sense. Or if you're not going to gain vital values, then don't make us spend vital values. Just let us battle for free, right? It makes a lot more sense. But yes, online battles, digital battles is definitely a right move in the right direction for a franchise called Digital Monsters, right? If you have to physically meet to battle, then it's more like 
physical monsters <laughs> or digital monsters. Yeah, but that's it. So in conclusion, all right, there are 20 key, 21 key differences that I've noted on the bracelet BE versus the older models. And I hope that this helps you to make a more informed decision if you're still on the fence about buying the bracelet BE. If you have not bought any so far and you are looking at all the Amazon offers or your local toy store is selling the bracelet that's probably selling the Digivice V on clearance and you're wondering which one should I pick up and if I'm forced to make a recommendation, I would say buying the bracelet B is the way to go. It will future-proof your Digimon experience. At least until they release a newer model, this is the best way to go forward. All the new DIM cards will be with a 23 roster size and it's only compatible with the bracelet B. It's not compatible with the older bracelets. So unless you're very confident that you're not going to play any new DIMs, and I wouldn't go there because honestly, there are a lot of exciting new lineups for the DIMs that are coming up. They have already done some survey on the Dragon theme and the Beast uh, themed DIM cards as well. So aside from the key features that I've already mentioned that Bracelet BE has, the fact is that newer DIMs are only supported on Bracelet BE. So if you have not bought any of these and you're wondering whether it makes sense to go for the ones that are going on massive discount on the older series or the Bracelet BE, the answer is the Bracelet BE. They are probably on massive discounts because like I said, honestly, with the decision that the new DIMs are not supported on the older devices, these are technically obsolete. So they are only on clearance and they are on huge discounts because they are no longer viable. Right? So I hope this helps you to make a decision if you are thinking about buying a bracelet to start raising Digimon. But otherwise, thank you for watching. Don't forget that I'm still recording all the Digimon logs for the Bracelet BE. You can check out the playlist here. I also have the older playlist for the older Vital series, but I didn't really make much uh, narration on them. I think in the new Bracelet BE series, I, I decided to do some commentary just on the video itself. But the older Vital series, I have like 300 over videos. I've recorded every single one of the Digimon that I've raised. And you can check it out if you're interested to look at some of the older sprites. I mean, that's that's the objective of me recording in the first place. I just wanted to capture all the sprites. On the side, I'm also raising Digimon on the brick type V-pad. And now it's the Digital Monsters X series. Uh, when Digimon Color is released, I will also record those logs. But take your pick. And remember, if you like what you watch, use your Omega Blade and cleave the like button and subscribe button into two. And otherwise, thank you for watching and bye-bye. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but my screen on the bracelet BE is like flickering. I don't know if you face the same problem. I hope it's not just my faulty device that would suck. But otherwise, I, I really like the, the black bracelet compared to this really loud band. So, take a pick. Do you want to stand out in a crowd? Then buy this.